Hello everybody, my name is Smite, and welcome to Into the Breach by Subset Games. Their other game is FTL Faster Than Light, if you've played that. There's a few references to it in this game. This is a strategy game where you save the world from giant insects by jumping from timeline to timeline with mechs from the future. I'll be playing on hard, which means there will be more spawns than usual, and those spawns will also upgrade a lot more often. I don't think there's any other differences than that. In this first video, we'll be going over the basic gameplay, and I'll ease up on that as we understand more and more what's going on. Let's get started. Ralph, hot off the presses of failing a mission to save the world, trying to try it again. He is a time traveler. We have other time travelers available to us as we unlock them, but for now he's the only one. A time traveler is a pilot, but they get a bonus. And Ralph's bonus is extra XP on kills. So he just levels up fast. The Riftwalker squad here on the squad selection screen is the only one we have. We will unlock those other squads as we play through the game. But right now we have basically the FTL's Kestrel equivalent in this game here. They do they do well at what they do, but they don't do anything exciting. They just do damage and they push things around. The Riftwalkers, I don't have any problem with them, but uh, they are not as interesting as some other squads we'll unlock later. As far as unlocking squads, we do need some coins. Coins come from achievements. I'm going to get every achievement, so we'll unlock those and go through them in order. And here are those achievements. This is the Riftwalkers. Watery Grave, drown three enemies. Uh, we'll do that in one battle. Kill an enemy from five or more tiles away with a dash punch is not a hard one to do. And the last one, complete, a first, uh, complete the first corporate island. You have to do that to win, so obviously we'll get that one, I would hope. As far as the mechs themselves, we have the combat mech, a prime type mech. There are four types of mechs. We only have three of them here. You always get three mechs. The one we're missing is science. We have Prime, which is kind of the in-your-face mech. Brute, usually a tank at range. And the ranged mech is usually doing something from far away. Artillery is a good example. Here is a very well-illustrated thing to show you some information about what this mech does, what its weapon is for. It punches an enemy for two damage and shoves them. This game is extremely good at showing you what's going on. It is full of images like this. It's full of information that you just have to figure out what to do with. It doesn't really obscure anything from you. It tries its best to tell you everything about what's up. So, that's one of the big selling points of this game for me. Very good strategy information. We also have over here that this mech has 3 health and 3 movement. Uh, same for the cannon mech down here, 3 health, 3 movement. But its gun only does 1 damage. It does it at range though, so in exchange for not having to be right next to the enemy, we can push them and do one damage. The artillery mech, with two health and three movement, can shoot over top of things. It shoots around the mountain instead of having to shoot through it. This allows it to uh, hit that target over there, and it also shoves all four tiles around the target, so one damage to where it lands, and everything else gets pushed away. We'll see those in action, and we'll make a lot more sense when we do, even though uh, those images show us how they work. We'll see how they work in action. There's not anything else to do here since we don't have any options. The only other thing to talk about is the victory medals. They just tell you, did you beat the uh, did you beat the game with this team? And how long did the game take? Did you go all the way to the end or did you end it early? Which you are allowed to do. Let's start. Ralph's ready to win. Here we have the island selection screen. We only have one island available to us. The other three have to be unlocked. Once they are unlocked, though, we can choose any of them from the start. It's our option. And over here is the Archive Inc. island, the one we start with this time. Down below, you can see the threat scanner. It tells us what sort of enemies are there. We'll save the museum island first. Over here, we have our mechs. High detailed loadout. We can see the experience trait that Ralph has. Uh, we have upgrades available. When we get those, we can either increase health and movement by two and one, or give them the special abilities of their weapons. In the case of Titan Fist, it's Dash Punch, 
for two upgrade points, or plus two damage for three. You can get both at once if you get five upgrades, and then you'd have a dashing four damage punch. It's very nice. Down here we just have two damage upgrades, and the last one is one damage upgrade for two damage, and building immunity, which would be very nice in the case of... Uh, these images often show exactly the situation you'd want to see them in. Uh, right there, two enemies attacking a city. Building immunity lets us shoot the city and not hurt it. Protecting the city. If the damage seems low, if the numbers seem small, three, for example, health and two damage on the punch, that's actually quite a bit. Uh, having a four damage move, that will kill most enemies in this game, and if it does not, they will be more than half dead. Nothing will survive. Uh, too many hits like that. Let's go ahead and jump into the first island, Archive Inc., the Museum Island. Here we see a little message from the uh, corporate head office. And here we see the island itself. We are here in this green zone. We can only attack the Vec that are dwelling in the areas right beside that area. And we can choose a path here, like we can go left and do this way, or we can do the exhi exhibits and head to the right. Now, we do get rewards for objectives on each of these missions. We don't have to do them, but we should. The rewards for both of these are two stars, but down here we see other ones. Let's talk about what those are. So up here is corporate reputation. That's what those stars are. That's basically money, and you spend it at the end of the island. If you make it through the island, you get the, a little store and you spend every star you have there. You don't save stars from island to island, it's only good here, so you have no reason to hang on to it. We spend every star we get, and we want as many as we can get, because that's money, that's upgrades. Speaking of upgrades, the next icon is upgrades, that's what goes into the reactor of these mechs right here. These orbs, we'll be buying those or finding them. Next up is the HP of our game, basically, this power grid is keeping our mechs running. If it hits zero, we're done. So we want to protect that. It only goes up to seven, so you don't have a whole lot of HP in this game. That being said, if you get it past seven, you upgrade the grid defense, which starts at 15. This is a chance to dodge damage when you should have taken damage. And you can upgrade it to plus 25, so this could go up to 40%, and you can get a bonus to push it a little further with pilots. Uh, next over here is the score, basically number of saved people. This is just a score. It doesn't affect gameplay any, but it is a score, so you want that to be high, but it doesn't really impact us. Let's go ahead and choose a mission. So we can either defend the satellite launches or destroy the dam and take less than three good damage. Taking less than three good damage is a very simple objective because generally speaking, you don't want to take three good damage anyway. You're always trying to not do that. We only have 5 HP. If we took 3 grid damage, that would be a disaster, so that seems like a given objective. I might end up doing both of these, though. I should go ahead and say, we will not have time to save the entire island. We're going to have to pick and choose the missions we want. Let's do this one. Destroy the dam. Here's a preview of the mission and what the corporate head thinks about it. He wants us to destroy the dam for this reason. Natural barrier. Makes sense. On the little mini-map here, we can see a couple of spawn points in the bottom right. That's where the enemy will appear. The dam is on the right here. The city, which is uh, our grid, is there. If those get hit, we lose health. That's what's up. So we have to pick a place for our mechs to jump down. Now, we can highlight these enemies, and if you hold control over them, you can see exactly what they do. The Alpha Scorpion here is the boss. Does three damage to a target that he holds in place. He also moves three. Over here we have the fireflies. They are ranged. They shoot one damage directly forward. Of all the enemies in the game, they are among the weakest. They are very easy to control. They are ranged though, so you have to worry about that. Here's the dam. It has two health. I'm gonna drop my guy right here beside it just in case I feel like destroying that this turn. Actually, I'll move him over soon, but uh, where do we drop our tank? Uh, initial positioning is very important. So the only thing really that's going to mess with me here is this guy who grapples, holds you in place. So 
if he grapples my tank here, I want to be able to shoot him uh, safely. I think that's a good place. This artillery can reach most of the map from back here, so we'll just drop it there. I did say I want to move this guy, so if I feel like destroying the dam, I'll just walk over to the right and destroy it. No problem. Let's go. They get to move first, but they do not attack yet. They only line up their attacks. Their attacks happen after our turn. Now that means that we can stop everything they're doing. Right now, if I hit end turn up here, what's going to happen is this huge damage scorpion will hit for three these two buildings. Because he's hitting for three, that's two damage. Straight up, just unless we get lucky and block it, which we probably won't because 15%. We'll probably just take two damage there. This Firefly is shooting this one for one, so we'll lose one of those buildings. And they would shoot my mech here for one. And if I move out of the way, you can see that this lights up now. We would take four damage this turn. We would almost be dead already. Uh, by the way, as long as you don't attack, you can undo any basic movements. You can just cancel. Game's very friendly about that. We also have a reset turn button, one time per battle, that can undo actions as well as movements but you cannot go back two turns uh, if you hit end turn up here it's locked in forever so that reset is powerful but it's not that powerful they let you make up for a mistake but you only get one so how do we solve this problem well a couple of things there's two spawners here next turn there's going to be two enemies coming out that's really annoying. We don't want that. This enemy, this elite, he is really powerful, really annoying, grapples us, does a ton of damage, lots of HP. Um, the dam is one of the objectives. I have to figure out a time that is good for me to destroy that. I think that time is now. So here is my plan. We are going to shove here. If we shoot this tile, we'll do no damage because there's nothing there. Pushing the city doesn't do anything because the city cannot be pushed. Pushing that enemy though, and I'll show you why I'm doing this. It'll knock him that way. The reason I'm doing that is quite simply because when I destroy this dam, there's going to be water here. This game is all about planning your attack between the three of them. Let's do this first. We're going to shove this guy into the path of his friend. His friend will hit him instead of this building. I will take one hit, but it is what it is. We'll be okay. Let's destroy this dam. Objective complete. Uh, we destroyed the dam. We got our star. We still have this problem though, this guy. So let's do what I said, let's shove into the water. He doesn't fly so he can't swim. Uh, he's dead. We just killed an elite unit. Five damage for one shot. Can't get better than that. Let's go ahead and in turn. This game is all about figuring out the best way to handle the situation. We have four enemies now. We only have three units to deal with them in. How do we do that? One of the problems I have here, I've made a mistake already. I, I moved here instead of here. Because my movement's so limited, now I can't get onto this land in time. That's unfortunate. What do we do instead? Well, we're just going to absorb a hit. This is what I meant when I said we might be taking a couple of hits here and there. There are quite a few spawns around. I can only do my best with what I got, so I can shove that guy out of the way, but un unfortunately, I'm left with this. I'm not allowed to attack, attack from the water, so that means we only get two attacks. We have three threats. I cannot save this building. We lost 161 people. And one energy on our power grid. Once again, we have four attacks going on. This time I can interrupt a little bit, so. The issue I'm having is 
how do I stop this enemy from shooting that? It might actually be impossible to do it because enemies are in the way. I can shove, but I can't shove that one. We actually have a solution here. But it has to be done in this exact order. Because I need each one of these tiles to be free. If I want to protect this building, I need to push him out of the way. This has to be done first. Our second move, and the freely made tile there. This is a very powerful little move here. Uh, it's going to shove this wasp here into this guy. He'll die because that's one damage. This guy also took damage and he's going to miss. What we do now is come over here and punch this jerk into him. That's two dead enemies. He is firing into this nothingness. Three enemies now. One of them has chosen to attack our mech, and that is generally a good thing. It is a hornet. It doesn't grapple. It flies and it hits for one. We can just get out of the way. The non-alpha version of this enemy is there. One shot, just like that, will kill both of those enemies. We'll do one damage to him and shove the other one into the water. We've got him. It may have been possible for me to kill this enemy too, but that's okay. You get XP for killing them, shown here on the left on those bars. Ralph already halfway up, and Nora here also halfway up. That's our turn. Victory is achieved. Rounds only last five turns, typically. Mission complete. Reward time. A little sad we lost some civilians already on mission one, but can't do anything about it, but move on and do our best to save the rest. We do have the opportunity to get some of that HP back if we can protect the coal plant or protect the emergency batteries here. What is my mission choice? Let's check out the tidal wave so we can see something new. Take less than three grid damage and protect the emergency batteries is the mission. Tidal waves are happening. Offshore volcano is causing tidal waves. Uh, it says warning, but this is actually a pretty beneficial thing because as you saw last mission my mechs can swim they cannot attack from the water but they can go into the water not really true of the Vec most of them drown the only exception would be an enemy like this Hornet here who can fly these two they can't they'll drown so basically what happens every turn is those tiles turn into water permanently and it will just go down the coast here turn by turn making more and more water Let's place our mechs. Now these enemies web, so I have to think about my move here. I expect them to, one of them to jump here and grapple my tank. You have to kind of try and predict, because you cannot take this back. Your placement at the start is a permanent choice, so make it a good one. We need to last four turns and take less than three grid damage. The emergency batteries are up here. Not only are they a city piece, so we'll lose a reactor piece if they get hit, but also we'll fail the mission. We don't want that. So this is a very important building up here. Thankfully, it's in a pretty safe spot. Okay, so this enemy has made a big mistake. We'll talk about the attack order now. I've been ignoring it. If you hold Alt, you will get this information. It shows you exactly who's going when. The first thing to happen is the tidal wave. Fire damage would happen, but none of the enemies are on fire. So the first thing to happen is that tidal wave, which means that this enemy who is moving third, right here, he'll drown before he can attack. So he's actually not even relevant. He's completely screwed. I can ignore him. That leaves us with two enemies and three attacks to control the situation. This enemy here, he's doing just fine. Uh, obnoxiously so. Doing just fine. This enemy up here attacking our emergency batteries. That needs to be stopped. 
How do we do all of that? Well... We also have this concern. Three new enemies will be showing up next turn. Which means uh, I'll be dealing with five if I don't kill these two on the left. This one's guaranteed dead, but these two are not. I have the ability to attack all of them with each of my units. We have a total of four damage. Not even enough to kill this guy. I think the move is... Uh, Let's do a little trade here in positioning. Hmm. I'm trying to think about how I can do this the best way. I guess I should mention, because I'm trying not to gloss over things that I'm aware of that you may not be. Because we shove, I can't stand here and punch this guy because we'll shove him into the emergency battery and it will destroy it. So we can't do that. It seems like an obvious move in this cluttered space to just go punch him, but it's wrong. It's the wrong move. I can't do that. So I'm trying to find a better solution. I might just go ahead and punch the enemy right in front of me. That seems like an okay choice. Alternatively, we could shoot him. I hate to waste any turn. I think... like I was trying to find a way to block the spawn, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Because any other solution I do, I can block the spawn, but I'll do damage to both of my mechs. And it's not huge damage. As long as we don't die, that damage will be repaired for free at the end of the battle. But I uh, shouldn't take damage for fun. I guess what I should do instead is just shoot this guy for one damage. He's also in a forest, which means he'll be lit on fire. Fire damage happens at the start of every turn. He's going to take one damage before anything else. As we saw here, fire damage happens first, no matter what. We'll go here and we'll shoot this guy. He's not on fire. Oh. <laughs> Oblivious me. He's going to hit that building. We're going to use our reset. It's for this kind of situation where you don't notice something. Let's go back a turn. We can do better. We can fix this. It doesn't have to be this way. Let's trade these two. Exact same moves, but we're taking one damage from here from the punch and putting it here instead. Now this enemy's dead. Now we're not taking any damage. Now we're good. That's the way to do it. The enemy that just spawned, the one that's weird looking, flying down there, he is a buffing enemy. One of these exists on every island. It's a different one on each one. Very annoying. This one gives plus one HP. Uh, to each enemy. That is a cap of HP. So now this enemy that had two health has three. Which means he won't die anytime soon. I need to get him off of my guy. He'll kill him. He's also webbed him, so I can't move him. So what's our move? Well, we have an issue here. Punchbot is incapable of reaching these enemies. Absolutely can't do anything right now. Just too far away. Gonna have to waste a turn just to get him closer. This enemy down here, hitting my building, we'll push him off. As for you, back up. This guy, it looks like he's shooting my building, but he's going to drown, so our turn is over already. Now, we can't do anything with this guy except repair and punch. Repair removes all status effects and gives you one HP, but we're already full and we have no status effects, so it doesn't do anything. The good news, that enemy that's on fire, even with his extra HP buff, he will die next turn automatically. And doubly so, because he didn't move off of the water tiles. We are in a bit of luck here. This enemy forgot to attack. He didn't attack because he couldn't reach any buildings. This enemy is attacking, but he's gonna die before he gets a chance.
we could shoot him. Uh, so what happens is an enemy who dies to something that's not a direct attack gives a small amount of XP to every unit on my team. So these two are going to give bonus XP to all three. If I killed them somehow, they give XP to just that one pilot. That's how you get XP. We can't kill them with anything we have. And my, somehow, despite my mech, uh, my mech punch mech not being able to do anything for two turns, we're still in good shape. So we're done here. Objectives complete. We got the watery grave achievement. Five enemies drowned or whatever in one one turn. Was it three? I think it was three. We got it though. I'll take a look at it. We can open the game up here and see. Three enemies in one battle, no big deal. Especially when the battle is half water. That's done. Well, we unlocked this mission. Air support, block three spawning vec. I do want to show off air support, which is why I'm going to do this now. Normally though, I would defend the satellite launches for the extra star. Air support is a one star mission. It's supposed to be easier. It's not always, but uh, because it's an easier mission, we have this. Defensive shields on some of the buildings. That means they take one hit, no matter how hard the hit is. One hit before they can take any real damage. Also, we have the new pilots piloting, fl <laughs> flying planes over our heads, dropping bombs just haphazardly on the field. We'll have to watch out for that. Let's do it. Was a good place to put my tank. This is this is acceptable. I think this will work. We have an alpha firefly over there. Very dangerous unit. And we have the airstrike here. Every unit that's in these yellow tiles will die, and they will die at the beginning of the turn before they do anything. Very dangerous. Okay. How do we solve this problem? What we've got going on right here is... Troubling? Because I, I gotta... I gotta knock this guy to the right, I think. I wanna knock him here. But how do I do that? The only way I can see to do it, unfortunately, is to take two damage on my mech. The first will be from the shot, and the second will be because my mech's on fire. I think that's what I'm gonna do, though, because I can do two damage to you, knock this enemy out of my face, protect my mech up here, and kill this alpha, which is the real big deal. Drowning that enemy is very appealing to me. We unfortunately will have to heal our mech next turn. I haven't talked about what happens if a mech dies, but what happens is not only do you lose control of it for the rest of the mission, you do get the mech back. You're not without a mech. You are without a pilot, though the pilot dies. And that's Ralph in there. He's my good pilot. We don't want that. Interesting situation. We can, uh... We can shoot this guy, and what will happen is Ralph, who is grappled, will get pushed here and take no damage. This enemy will get pushed here. He'll miss and take no damage. This guy here attacking my tank has made a big mistake. We can sit on top of the spawn, block it, take one damage for that, keep the spawn from happening. We'll knock that guy into the airstrike. He's dead. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's free Ralph. Now I did say that I should repair Ralph, but actually, I'm gonna wait on that. I'm gonna remove that buff. Ralph's gonna have one health left. He'll be okay. We'll make it. Let's do it. Blocking the spawn down here helps you keep that field clear. Too many enemies at once is really dangerous. Okay. This enemy is harmlessly aiming at this. I 
think what I need to do... is allow this shot to happen because it will not hit the city. That shield will block it. Instead, why don't we shove this enemy up here? It will block the spawn and shoot its friend. The question is, will it shoot its friend before his friend does damage? It will not. It moves after him. So we have this enemy going fifth. This is third. That means that this uh, cannon mech will take damage. It doesn't have to, though. It can shoot him, push him out of the way, get XP for itself, and be at one health. Then there's this, down here. Let's block that. But of course, to do that and survive, we'll have to repair. We need to get rid of that fire anyway. Nice work, Ralph. This shot doesn't do any damage, as shown and we have three spawns all blocked as shown by the hand, the red hand. One damage to every target that's on them, two of them are us. What that means is we've got two enemies at very low health and nothing else. Very controlled situation. In fact, one of the enemies didn't even move out of the way in time and is dead. We can just hang out. Mission accomplished. We have two pilots leveled up. Let's see what they got. It's random. Grid defense, not what I... <laughs> that's not really what I'm looking for, Ralph. Oh, man. I would call that bad luck. We got 6% defense. Um, it's not useless by any means, but of all the things to get, it is the least effective buff. The other buffs you can get are a reactor upgrade to assign to whatever you want, which I would say is the best, or your mech can just get health or movement from the pilot. So we had a pretty bad roll there on that. We're gonna have to deal with, I consider it to be the worst buff, but here's our options for last mission here. We only get four. Our fourth mission will either be uh, protect the coal plant and the battle with less than four mech damage, or the thing I wanted to show off, defend the satellites. We're gonna do that. One star per satellite. Let's get it done. Protect the satellites, there they are, there's two of them. One each, and three spawning coming at them. Those satellites have two HP each, and they will be leaving the field as they launch. Also, they are immune to smoke, which we haven't seen yet. They're also immune to shove, which we certainly have seen, uh, seen so... How are we gonna do this? my cannon there I uh, I'm I was thinking about just dropping them in a straight line but I'll tell you the problem with that if I put him here and this guy decides he's gonna attack him what do I do about it then well I'm in a bad way because I won't be able to move my mech and I won't be able to attack him because if I attack him this way I'll hit the city and this artillery mech cannot fire one tile beside him it has to be two can only fire like here, here, cannot fire here. So this would be a really bad place to position my mech. Gotta back it up a little bit actually. That looks better. There's our first pod of the game. It's in a terrible place too. Wow, is it ever in a terrible place? Oh my. Very important pod, and destroying it, as you can see, it's an objective now to collect it. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate, because if I shove this enemy onto it, it will explode. That means, and it honestly is more important than the city, I'm in trouble with that. How do I get that pod without destroying it? Very bad luck. Well. I wish I could fire here. But that too will destroy the pod. All of these moves will destroy the pod. The only thing I can do to keep that pod safe, actually, is to shoot the city and push this guy off of it. Allowing that enemy to hit that city that hard seems like a mistake. 
But do I bite the bullet and shoot the city for one damage to prevent two? That's what I'm doing. Ralph. You're gonna punch this guy. Get him out of the way a little bit. And we'll do a little damage to the buff enemy. That was not good. <laughs> but it's the best I had. The first satellite launching is on the right. This situation looks a little grim, but it's not as bad as it looks, that's for sure. What's going to happen is this satellite's going to launch, and it's going to kill all three of them. They're all done. But that's only true if the satellite actually launches. It is the last thing to go before enemies come out. It is number six on the turn right now. That means this enemy is going to hit it for one. This enemy actually made a mistake. If this enemy were hitting the satellite, we'd have a problem. But he's not. So... What's going to happen instead is this enemy is the only one I have to worry about. If I move out of the way, they're hitting nothing. This guy, though, is a problem. He is shooting the satellite for three damage. I can't allow that to happen. How do I deal with that? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. How much damage can we do to this guy? That's the question. The answer to that is... One, two... Three... We'll have one health left. It's such a cluttered mess here. I'm trying to find a way to protect this pod and both satellites, and I'm not seeing it. I'm a little shy on movements, unfortunately. I'm not sure what to do. What is our solution? At least one satellite is safe. How can we protect our resources? I can get that time pod. With him. Or, I can just try and remove it. I think I have a solution. Unfortunately, we're going to take another crit damage. We're taking quite a bit of that. But, here's what's up. We shove this enemy into his friend, dealing one damage. We move you out of the way. I'll show you why later. One tile forward. Shoot this enemy for one damage, but the shove into my buddy deals one damage to both of them. We go here, we punch this jerk over there. He's going to attack this tile, which is why I moved my tank. But, he's gonna miss. This enemy is getting away with murder. These three are dead. Our time pot is safe. That's the best I can do. A little bit of revenge for the lives lost here. I should point out that when the satellite launches, it will kill this time pod, so that means I absolutely must collect it now, because next turn it will be too late to safely do it. Let's kill this enemy outright, just get rid of him 
and we'll just hang out with you. I apologize if I take a little while on some of the turns. I definitely want to get the best that I can out of them though. Rushing in this game sometimes is a mistake. I typically don't take too long though. Like here's our situation. This guy's shooting our satellite. He's the biggest threat. He will kill it. This guy will not. We need to get our tank out of the line of fire too. Only these four tiles will explode so we can't have that. Where are we putting them? We can get some free XP by killing this wasp. Why not? We can stand here and block that shot. Keep that city damage from happening. Repair so that he doesn't die. And a simple shove will knock this enemy out of the threat zone. That is going to do it. That's a mission complete. I managed, at the cost of a couple of lives, unfortunately, to get all the objectives done. So about the time pod. The time pods are random rewards and one reactor core every time. The core is guaranteed, so we're going to get a mech upgrade. But sometimes you get a bonus in there. No bonus this time. We have a reactor core. The boss has appeared. He's attacking the corporate HQ. We gotta stop him. But before we do that, so let's put our core down. We need to pick a mech to upgrade. What's it gonna be? We can make a building immunity shot. That's a pretty good choice. We can get working towards one damage, but we can't get it yet. So what I would do with the pod in the meantime Let's put it in movement, and you are allowed to reassign it however you want. It's energy. What you're doing with the core is permanently assigning it to a mech. Once you've done that, you can't move it off of that mech. But you can shuffle them around the mech however you want. Just like energy systems in FTL. We could get movement on either of these two, or building immunity on the artillery. That's what we are choosing between, I think, that movement is a really powerful tool. I think I'll put it on my dash mech because they can't dash yet. Once they can, movement will be a little bit less important. But right now, what we have is a melee required movement attack. This will help them get in range. That's what I think. We'll go with that. We have 3 HP left. Let's not lose these. This Vec Abomination is here. We need to kill it to get one of the stars and defend the HQ, a one star, a one HP building, to get the other one. It's right here. Our boss, the Hornet Leader. All of the bosses in this game are immune to water, and f uh, and lava for that matter. They will not die for going into those zones. They will lose their turn though. This mech, uh, this is not a mech. It's a Vec. This Vec flies, so it won't lose its turn if I push it over water. Uh, it also does a three tile attack for two damage each. An extremely dangerous hornet with seven HP? Six HP. It's got two buddies with him. They will get more though as the battle goes on. Where are we going to drop our boys? Tank. I'm a little worried about this grappling enemy. I think I'll drop my mech here. And artillery can hang out in back. That looks good. I expect that the Hornet will drop here and attack both of these. That seems like something it would do. Jerk that it is. In fact, I wonder if maybe if I put my mech here, maybe he will... Maybe this Hornet will fly here and attack those two. Maybe I can trick the enemy into doing that. That would be great. Let's try it. Getting the enemy to attack the mechs is ideal. Well, he didn't. He went for what I thought he would do. Simple solutions. We're just going to punch him to make him miss. We'll drown his friend. And I have the opportunity to do one damage and block a spawn, but I'm not going to sacrifice any more civilian lives for that, so we're just going to let him get two friends. He's got four HP now. That's turn one. A hornet and an alpha hornet, oh my. And they're going crazy on the attack. We are in trouble now because we can't stop all of these enemies. They're too spread out. I cannot. 
possibly get them all in one set. So some civilian is going to die here. I don't see any way out of that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that enemy. We'll punch this boss again. Shoot this guy out of there. This building, unfortunately, is undefended. Our grid is nearly gone already on Island 1. Having a bad time. And the boss just got a buff. On the bright side, it doesn't matter. Because we're going to shove him into his friend and kill him. He's dead. What is our best solution here? Actually, it's a little weird, but our best solution is this. We shoot here, and what happens is we shove that hornet into our cell, we take one damage, but it takes one and dies. <laughs> and our combat mech blocks a spawn. The problem with that is, again, do I really want to take one civilian damage? Well, I don't. We have options involving that damage bar, but we don't want that, so... I think this is the right move, though, and... We'll make this guy miss. We'll just make him miss. Do I allow this guy to do two damage to my tank in order to do three damage to them? I think that's a good trade. I could kill this enemy as well. In the name of action economy, I think that's the move. I'll kill that guy instead. Then we don't have to take damage. Turn over. They have three enemies who are buffed on the last turn. Theoretically, I should be able to defend everything. Theoretically. Yeah, no problem. It seems like it's all pretty straightforward here. We use our tank to shove this guy out of the way. Move one. Move two. Just putting him there. And shoving this guy north. Northwest. Uh... Now this move will kill him and get the other one out of my way. That's all we have to do. Even though they are in a good place, they're going to run. Because the final turn is here. They've given up. Island 1 is safe. And I know it felt like I was not doing too hot, but not only is Island 1 safe, and we got our mech reactor promotion and that achievement for beating the first island we got a perfect island too which means that I completed every single objective a lot of lives were lost but every objective was done that is the condition for a perfect island when you get a perfect island you get one free reward it's a good reward we have a choice between a random weapon a time traveler or two grid I know my grid is low but the Time Traveler is almost always the choice. The reason is, Time Travelers are worth two stars. So even if I don't want this Time Traveler, I can assign him to the island and get two stars back. And if I wanted to buy Grid Defense, I could do that. Isaac Jones gives you an extra reset turn. If you don't use resets, that's not anything special, but he's unlocked now. So let's just mess up one more time than before. We got a mech reactor upgrade here, which means this tank has a free one. And here we are, at the store, finally. We have eight reputation. Isaac there is worth two. Do I want to sell him, or do I want to sell the pilot that has grid defense? Pretty boring upgrade, grid defense. I could get something better on Isaac, maybe. I think I'll do that. I think I'll get rid of Nora. Assign her to the island. There's always a weapon on sale. In this case, it's this. 
non-damage to the target on the tank and shoves around it. I don't really want that. We also have a couple regular priced items. This one is a bonus to the damage that Vex do to each other. We have a spear. It's very nice, but so is the dash punch. So I don't feel like I need that this time. It's also very expensive to fully upgrade. As you can see, five for that. And this one is pretty solid. Jump there, push enemies, do damage to yourself. Uh, I don't think I want any of those. It's not a bad idea to just buy reactor cores. So I'm going to assign Nora here. We're going to get one reputation for it. I'm going to buy two cores, and I'm going to buy three grid power. Now I feel like I'm not dying, so that's good. Let's switch pilots. Put Isaac on the tank, and uh, this guy can uh, upgrade the building immunity for free. We have two upgrades. What do we want with them? Do we want straight damage, two damage on the tank, or do we want dash punch? I want dash punch, but I'm going to give the tank movement and we'll work on this damage upgrade when we can get it. That's Island 1. Thanks for watching everybody, will join me next time on Island 2. We've unlocked the RST Corporation, the desert. I'll see you next time, we'll go there.